this involves quality assurance and special inspection requirements for masonry. And at the end, I hope I can simplify the thing and make uh, make the whole subject uh, more understandable uh, in res with respect to what the code requires. First of all, let's uh, go over some learning objectives. We want to understand the history behind masonry quality assurance because it's not new. It's been around for many, many, many years. And I'll take you back to the genesis, to the beginning, and how much difficulty over the first 55 years it was in understanding what quality assurance done is and how much progress we've made over the last 10 or 15 years in clarifying that and making it a lot easier on what to, uh, uh, what to do in the field to make sure that the uh, quality assurance program is implemented properly. Also, we need to know what the code requirements for the minimum quality assurance are. Uh, the code requires a certain threshold or a certain level, and we can always go above and beyond that. In certain cases, we are certainly encouraged to, uh, because this, remember, the code is the minimum quality assurance, and we have to be comfortable with what we specify to be our quality assurance program. We also want to be aware of what I call the critical components of structural masonry. There's about two or three of them that are a little bit more important than the others. Everything is important, but these are absolutely what I call critical components of structural masonry. We'll review, we'll review those and how to uh, make sure that they're implemented properly. And we want also have the ability to develop an effective quality assurance program. This is the easy part because the code has actually already done that for you. If we know where to uh, go in the code or in the masonry standard, we can certainly impose that or, or use that to our benefit and actually be consistent from job to job in specifying the quality assurance program. It's a prepackaged plan that's already there and ready to put into our project documents. For the outline today, number one, we're going to look at code requirements, the history and where we are today. As I mentioned, it's been around for a long time, actually since 1943. The Uniform Building Code imposed a provision in the code that required some inspection. It didn't have a whole lot on it. We'll take a look at that language and uh, get a sense of how uh, ambiguous and loose it was. Also, we're going to look at developing a quality assurance program and what, what we are obligated to do and what to look for in the field and the, you know, looking for the critical components of masonry. And in this, we're going to have some examples, kind of like uh, case studies of some of the project documents that have been published and, and how confusing they can be. If we look at them and we're constructively critical of those, then we can make our own project documents a lot better. And then we have a bonus, that is quality assurance simplified. There's no sense in reinventing the wheel here, and a lot of times we tend to do that. It's already prepackaged in the masonry standard, and I'm going to show you where it is and how to bring it into your project documents to be consistent from job to job. If the contractors understand and the inspectors understand what they are supposed to do in the field with a quality assurance program that is carrying out carrying it out through a quality control program, then it, it becomes a lot more consistent, easier to understand, and it's going to give you a better quality masonry and as the end result. That's what we're really after. We're going to look at the history according to the UBC or Uniform Building Code, and then we're going to look at the IBC also, and it hasn't really changed that much from the UBC to the IBC a little bit, but not a whole lot. And then we're going to look at what I call the com critical components. Critical components, of course, for structural masonry is reinforcement. And we, meet, we need to make sure that the reinforcement is properly grouted so that it can be effective. Masonry is terrific in compression, but it's not so great in tension. And that's where the reinforcement comes in. When you combine the two, put the two together, it's a good system that is good in both tension and compression. And as long as we have that, then we can resist all kinds of imposed loads, like hurricanes, earthquakes, uh, gravity loads, and the like, and, and ter terrorist loads, too. It, uh, it has a benefit there, too. And also, we're going to take a, a kind of a special look at connections, because that is where I, systems, connections can fail. And when connections fail, it makes the whole building look bad. The masonry might not fail. It might be the roof connection where it slips off the masonry, the, the, the roof girder slips off the masonry, and then the whole building is uh, devastated if the, roof if the building collapses or the roof collapses. The masonry wall may still be standing, but uh, without the entire system, the building system, uh, a lot of repair has to be made. And then, I, then I, uh, as I mentioned, we're going to look at what I call the right specification. We're going to look at some examples of specifications, how they're interpreted in the field, and how they can be vastly improved and simplified. 
And then the conclusion, what to look for moving forward? Where can we go? How can we make this whole system of inspection, and in, in this particular presentation, masonry inspection, better? And it's, it, it'll be better if we can cl uh, convey a clear message when we're putting together the quality assurance program to make sure that the quality control program, that is the implementation of the QA program, is properly done. 